markets, speculation, and risk. This is the Chat with Traders podcast, hosted by Aaron Fifield. Hey, welcome boys and girls. I'm Aaron Firefield and you are listening to episode 185. My guest today is Jamie Rogozinski, a serial entrepreneur who resides in Mexico and the man responsible for bringing Wall Street bets to life, the infamous and wildly popular subreddit, which has been appropriately labelled as Like 4chan Found a Bloomberg Terminal. If that's confusing to you, I'll elaborate. Wall Street Bets is an online forum on Reddit where the majority of its 700,000 plus members aren't looking to establish long-term sustainable trading careers. Instead, they're buying lotto tickets on commission-free trading apps, taking almighty risks and attempting to strike it rich before the sun comes up tomorrow. You Only Live Once is quite literally in the makeup of Wall Street Bets culture. This is an online community of mainly unsophisticated investors where losses of tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars are so common that it's considered the norm. And although it's less common, there's also the occasional member who's handsomely rewarded for his or her audacious risk-taking. It's kind of insane what goes on there, especially because it's all real life, minus the odd trolling stunt. But make no mistake, I'm not throwing shade at Wall Street Bets here. I'm actually very fascinated by its brazen culture and I love the rawness of it all. Not to mention, the comments are incredibly entertaining. And I'm sure there's some insight to be gleaned if you look hard enough, even if it's perhaps do the opposite. However, it is the absolute worst place you could go if you are seeking sound and rational financial advice. So you've been warned. Uh, Speaking with Jamie, he tells how the subreddit took on a life of its own, evolving to become what it is today. Some highlights from the timeline featuring a member who exposed an infinite money cheat code on Robin Hood and the infamous farmer bro, Martin Shkreli, who was once a moderator, plus the largest gains and losses in Wall Street Bets history. So let's get right into it. And a break from the general seriousness of Chat with Traders episodes, here is Jamie Rogozinski on episode 185. There was uh, resources online as to how you can invest the money, and a lot of the forums that existed at the time were you know, really conservative, you know, how to, how to uh, invest into Roth, or, uh, Roth IRA plans to shield against uh, uh, taxes and to, to diversify and to try and have more conservative uh, long-term investments uh, with, with longer time horizons. And I was looking for something that was shorter term, higher risk, higher return. There really wasn't, wasn't much of a place for it. And so Reddit at the time was was much smaller than it was uh, now. And it was a very interactive community. And so I'd started uh, the subreddit. You know, the name that I'd picked the Wall Street Bets was uh, I, I didn't have the intention of, of, uh, of turning it into what it is now, which is, you know, it does have a, a huge gambling feel to it. It, it was uh, more of a place where I wanted to have more of an aggressive, high risk, high return hangout uh, where people wanted to come and learn and people wanted to come and teach and uh, and they weren't afraid of, of, uh, of taking that approach with the market. Uh, my intention at the time was, you know, hoping to make some money. That definitely was the uh, the goal of it. And I guess the name that I picked was with the intention of, of pushing away any critics, right? All the other subreddits that existed were investing or stock market or stocks or uh, options or, you know, it was very, very, I guess there's a lot in the name. People knew what they were expecting when they came to it. Yeah, exactly. So at that point, the, 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 you know, the, the, I would be able to get rid of any criticism right off the bat. And, you know, and th- that pretty much works. People make the assumption right off the bat. And so, Is it correct that the, the final push which motivated you to start Wall Street Bets was when you got kicked out of uh, the subreddit investments? Is that true? What's the story there? I believe there's some sort of ongoing tension there. I'm not sure where that rumor started. Um, I mean, but, I mean, there's there's validity to it. I mean, definitely uh, there's hostility. Even today, if you go to if you go to, to oh, actually, I haven't been there today, so maybe it's not the case. But yeah, you know, last time that that I went to it, if if you go there, 
with good reason, of course, they have their their purpose for for being there, and I don't fault them for it. You know, if you go there and 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 you try and start a conversation about using, let's say, naked stock options for for uh, a quarterly earnings report on on a given tech stock, um, you're likely to get frowned upon, and you, you're likely to get people that that. Um, aren't going to help you out with what you're looking for. You know, supposing, for example, that you're looking for, hey, I'm looking for somebody to help me pick out the correct strike price and expiration date for these options because I believe that this earning report is going to be positive or negative or whatnot. Um, Instead of actually having somebody constructively explain to you, well, you know, that the thing is the volatility is going to go up and the way these pricings, uh, you know, the options prices are affected because of blah, blah, blah. Uh, instead of having somebody explain that to you, they just they'll just send you away and say, no, 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 you're risking too much. You should just consider indexing uh, into a low commission ETF, you know, that pays dividends or something. I can't really remember if there was a specific event. There might have been, and maybe that's where the rumor started, and it just kind of continued from there. But uh, th- there was definitely ever since I did start Wall Street bets, there was a very friendly rivalry with the uh with the head mod of of investing who's also last i checked the head mod of i think it's stocks no or stock market and some other uh yeah we've had you know we've had uh civil dialogues and 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 uh <laughs> and friendly rivalries uh between each other and the, the interactions we've had have been uh, have been good, but yeah, the motivation definitely came from from the fact that there was just no home, no place to to call home, and it, it did not existed no, no, neither on Reddit nor outside of Reddit, where uh, places were welcome. Outside of Reddit, you have all these, you have these these sites that are, I guess, you know, come, we'll teach you how to trade, but you know, for a fee, uh, for whatever fifty dollars a month, we'll teach you how to trade, or you know, we have some some expert and. Uh, without passing judgment on those on those sites, it, w- it wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for that community feel. I was looking for a place where, both where I could learn, right? So somebody could say, "Hey, this is how you, you this is how you want to find the correct uh, pricing for the stock if you want to play the earnings." And I'm not going to pass judgment on your idea, but if you believe the earnings are going to be positive, this is what you can expect, and this is what the recommendation is on that. You know, and also have people to critique the trade itself. By the way, your idea is not so good because the earnings doesn't just take into consideration the number of sales they had for their new product. So they also have to take into consideration a new tax law, for example. Uh, so, you know, so to have productive conversation like that. Okay. So you're looking for somewhere that was less conservative, more uh, comfortable with the idea of high risk. Going into it, did you have any like grand plans for what Wall Street bets might become? Not, not really. I mean, I certainly didn't expect uh, for it to become what it did today. My, my hopes were, uh, my hopes were that it would become a place for learning. Uh, that that's that was always the theme that that was prevalent throughout. Uh, that that we wanted to make it a place that would nurture. Uh, that, that would want to that would make it comfortable for both the people that had experience that could come in and they could have fun and they could share and it would also be a place that would be comforting for the people that didn't really know what they were doing. Nowadays, it's maybe a little bit harder for the the people that want to learn because it is much bigger. Uh, so if somebody wants to know how to find that options pricing, you can dig through comments and you'll find it. But um, but I think it's now moved. A little past the beginner stage now it's i guess a little bit more into the intermediate or in some cases more advanced but but learning still takes place on on, uh, on a much more sophisticated level i mean if you dig, dig through comments it's actually quite uh you can find quite some some thought-provoking gems in there um you know if you if you read through the the the, the comments and, and you can read through the lines and the sarcasm there's um uh, it's quite interesting but no i didn't i didn't uh, didn't really have any huge aspirations for it they just wanted to make a, a community in there and and i'd just be interested to hear how you would like describe wall street bets like what it is today you know cuz i suspect that we have very different audiences i may be wrong there but that's just kind of what i presume um so for a person who's clueless about this corner of the internet and has no idea it even existed until right now. How would you describe it? Like, what should they expect? 
Oh, it's really difficult to describe. I guess the, the, the slogan, somebody on a different subreddit ended up saying that 4chan finds a Bloomberg terminal continues to be an accurate statement. And so That's hilarious, by the way. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody in, on a finance subreddit said that once and I just took it and went with it. So for people that aren't familiar with what that even means, um, so 4chan is, is famous for just this anarchy, uh, or I guess it's also attributed to where Anonymous, the hacker group that, that was very mischievous. It tends to hang out. And then the Bloomberg terminal, of course, is, is I guess I'm, I'm hoping that your audience does uh, know what that is. I would hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a place where, where you have this, you know, you have this mischievous group of people, this this lawless, chaotic mixture of, of I, I guess, kids would be a, a decent term. Like they're young adults, really. You know, most of these guys have uh, yeah, an income enough so that they can make the types of bets that they're making and uh and they have access to to you know making trades on 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 large scale and just enough to get themselves into some trouble the types of things that you get to find on on wall street bets is you'll you'll see uh you'll see let's see if i could break it down into three or four different categories you'll have people that make trades and they'll, and they'll post these trades and say i just made a big trade uh and they'll make these just very high risk trades and they'll say i just bet fifty thousand dollars on super super high risk trade you know on the earnings report or whatever it is or some sophisticated options they, they, they do tend to gravitate heavily towards options uh and then they'll, they'll post their their results you know if they made money or lose money and sometimes they'll put videos on youtube we'll, we'll stream their reactions um, so that's one category. A uh, different category, which is also incredibly popular, um, sometimes the most underestimated portion of it is the, uh, I guess they call it the DD or the due diligence. Um, there's there's a huge discussion thread that's on on the very top of the page uh, that's there every day. It's updated every day and people discuss, I guess, market moves and you'll actually find very thoughtful discussion on there. Obviously, some jokes and things like that, but you'll have, uh, you have commentary about market related news or or or, uh, or topics that, i guess that, that they might be relevant and, and usually you do get some some interesting food for thought in there and you you will find some some gems that, that people will will turn around and, and uh at the very least if not act on it think about it um and then you'll have i guess the, the humorous memes some pictures or videos which can be very very entertaining uh, yeah, I guess for recent examples would be with Tesla. Yeah, you know, they had this, the, the new cyber, uh, truck that came out that gave plenty of cannon fodder for, for the subreddit to make many, many jokes. And they're very creative. Um, you know, they're very funny with them. Yeah. But you do have this picture of the people that actually go into these conversations that, that through humor actually make some very brilliant observations through their ironic satirical perspectives of they do make some points. One of the categories as well, um, I'm not sure if categories is the right terminology there, but uh, YOLO trades seems to be a thing um, where people are just balls to the wall, all in, making major gains or also major losses, probably more often than not major losses. When did that start to become an everyday occurrence? Because if you go on there, it's kind of just like, it's accepted as the norm. Yeah, so, well, first of all, so the, the person who coined the term YOLO, well, I don't know who coined it in the world, but on, on Wall Street Bets, the person who first used that term was was actually a troll, a very famous one, the F.S. Comio, or I don't know how he pronounces it, the, the famous Canadian troll who faked a, a huge, huge trade. Uh, and we get into him later, um, but he... he uh, Started using the, the term "you only live once" (YOLO) uh, for for uh, very hype um, profile trades that he did, and then people kind of you know it became such high profile that it became a popular theme after that to the point where it did it became one of the different tags that you can make a post under um, or a category, I guess. So I guess that's when it became, and I guess that was I don't know maybe a couple years ago, two, three, four, maybe two or three years ago. So that's when it became official, but th- it had always been there. I mean, the the since the very beginning, these trades were very high risk. I mean, I'm thinking I can come up with examples 
uh, from people five, six, seven years ago. Let me see. The first example I can think of is a guy by the name of, yeah, I don't think he's there anymore, but if he is, he's changed his name several times, but a guy by the name of disgruntled trader, uh, who I think tried to start his own subreddit because he ended up made like $120,000 off of, uh, some Google earnings call trade. That was the first huge, huge win, which back in the day was just unheard of. Nowadays it's common. Um, I'm not, I don't remember how much he put it at risk, but obviously he had to put enough so that he can make that, that amount of money. He might not have used the term, but that's, you know, but that was a huge trade. So I think that the, the, the theme had always been there. Yeah. Since, since, since I can remember people were trying to make these really, really high risk trades, the, the, the advantage, or I guess the advantage, one of the features of options trades is they allow you to make some very high risk, high return trades. You can buy lottery tickets or you can do some even more dangerous, more ridiculous trades with them. But if you wanted to limit your risk and 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 uh, open yourself up to, to some very substantial gains, you can do that. Or if you want to expose yourself to very high risk as well, you can do that too. But millionaires have been made on the subreddit doing that. <laughs> do you suspect that there's a lot of people in there who are playing with money that, you know, they can't really afford to lose? Like, I kind of get the impression, I might be way off because I don't spend a lot of time on the, on the subreddit, but um, you know, it's kind of like some people have saved up some money at their job or they've come into a little bit of money and they're like, all right, I'm going to you know, punt this on the stock market and uh, <laughs> cross my fingers and hope for the best. I kind of get the impression that they're not really trying to necessarily have a sustainable long-term trading career. They're trying to get rich overnight. Is that fair? Yeah, I would say that's fair for the majority of, of the people. I think that, yeah, I'd say the majority of the people that you see, they, they want to try and get rich quick. You know, a common thing with someone that, that makes the most dangerous thing that can happen to a trader, especially early on, is if they make a lot of money or, you know, if they get lucky early on is the most dangerous thing that can happen to a trader because then it gets to their head that, that it's their skill that got them there when oftentimes making a lot of money is, is really just luck. You know, there, there's exceptions, but you know, and so if it gets to their head, then, then yeah, they want to turn professional and, and, and almost always it turns out pretty disastrous. The, the much more palatable stories are the ones where people lose money first, then they become humbled by this. When they say, you know what, this is just going to be, you know, a hobby or then they make fun of themselves. They call themselves de degenerate gamblers and they hope to eventually figure out how to crack it or eventually make some money. Some people do, some people might, some people dig themselves into huge holes and then somehow manage to get out of it and then call it a day. Um, and some people, and, and there are examples of this where they do make money and they say, wow, I just made a ton of money. I seriously doubt I can ever re replicate this. So I'm just going to call it quits because uh, I understand the, the math behind this and, and I'm not even going to try to keep doing this. And so they, they'll take their big paid in and, uh, and walk away from it. Um, so I, I'd say that's a fair categorization. The majority of the people that are looking for, for a lottery ticket win. And, uh, and, you know, maybe some other people are using it as a pastime. They're using it some disposable income. They're putting in, you know, a few hundred bucks a week or a few thousand, you know, a couple thousand bucks a month. And, you know, hoping that at one of these big paydays will, make it big and and that's their that's the way that they're using their disposable income something i did want to ask you jamie wall street bets it's it's grown to be massive like it's huge it what have you got now it's over seven hundred thousand members right now and we're recording this at uh, the end of uh towards the end of 2019 uh you get over two million unique views every month why do you think it has become so popular is it purely the entertainment factor and a little bit of education thrown in the mix? Or is there something to be said there about the, the culture and the mindset of wannabe investors and traders? That's actually the, the subject of the book. I think it's a confluence of, of different things, right? So we have, I think there's the union of a cultural aspect. So you have an attitude of post-financial crisis millennial uh mindset where uh, where where this generation doesn't necessarily have the same respect for for uh, the stock market or wall street they don't um uh 
they don't see it as a, uh, as a vehicle for putting in their retirement funds. You know, you have, uh, you have examples, right? A recent example where one, I don't know what to call it, a trader member, you know, this one guy, he put in uh, almost 10 years ago, he took in $170,000 and he put it into two ETFs that were leveraged ETFs. So it was risky. Uh, one of it was, I believe, an S&P leveraged ETF. And the other one was a, a FAS, which is a financial services ETF. And he made it, and, he, and he's, I don't think he's cashed it out yet, but he's tightened his stops and he expects to get stopped out any day now. He posted a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, you know, his, his, his uh, earnings so far unrealized, but um, uh, it's up to $1.5 million. And in the post, he explained that if he were to do it again, he would not. He would not repeat that again. He said that what he did was foolish, and he said that it was really risky, and now he's you know, approaching 40 years old, and his risk tolerance is no longer. Obviously, this is not your typical Wall Street bets person who, who has <laughs> what they call like a uh, you know, the, uh, the risk tolerance, which is much higher than that. But uh, you know, his, his attitude is really telling. Here's a guy that that just made over the last year 1.5 million dollars give or take by by holding on to an investment for 10 years into a diversified ETF you know into the S&P 500 which hits all what is it, 11 sectors and this guy is saying that he doesn't want to take the risk anymore because he's he's too old enough and his priorities are different right so and this is this is a, the, the millennial generation uh, who was really hurt from this you know post 2008 crisis and he's, you know, he's an example of, of a certain type of mindset that says the stock market is a place, you know, that can be used as a tool for making money, but it's not a place to be trusted. Uh, then you have other people that can say, okay, well, you know, the, the Wall Street is a place where you can make money, right? <laughs> but, but we're going to try and make more money like a slot machine, or we can try and uh, literally just use it as scratch off lot. Let's try and find the ways to try and get the most, most, most amount of, you know, leverage or the most bang for the buck out of it. Uh, I have disposable income. I can, let me see if I can become a millionaire, but there are examples, uh, where people have become millionaires on the subreddit. Um, uh, not a lot of them, but you know, a handful. And there's also, I just, I, I want to make sure not to glorify. There's a lot of people whose lives have been ruined as well. So, you know, by, by no means is this, is this a, <laughs> Uh, behavior that I want to advocate for, but you know, just the, getting into the mindset to your question, um, you know, that's 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 kind of the attitude they have. So there, there's a cultural aspect of it, and then you have uh, the technological component or the the access component of it. You have these brokers that have commission, you know, zero commission uh, stock trades, which you know, and, and stock options trades, and and, and uh, cryptocurrency trades, and. And there's, there's, uh, what do you call them? Penny stock trades. That pretty much all of them do them now. You know, like everyone, everyone tends to focus on Robinhood. They all do them now. Uh, it's the stat, the status quo at this point in the U.S. at least. It's hyper gamified. You know, you 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 know now specifically with Robinhood. You know, you download the app. You can't. There's no app. There's no program on your computer. You can't do this through the website. You can't call your broker the way that you might be able to have done so in previous generations. You download the app. You you fund the account instantly, right? Uh, so you can right away start trading. You know, something that that uh, I guess it's more specific to the impatient gen millennial generation. You know, and you get these little confetti animations, which are, uh, you know, which are kind of fun and you get to score little points. And so you, you have uh, uh, instant access to, to, to with with low, low cost. And I don't talk about the commissions to the trade. I'm talking about the, the entire experience is low cost, you know, from you download it, you really quickly, you register and then you, you know, you're already playing with it. Your, your minimum um, funding for the account is super low. All these barriers are, are low, so the access is, is super expanded, and then, and then the tools available are also massively huge. Uh, and this, this I believe, is, is an issue, right? So you talk about the ETF market. Let's say you wanted to to uh, to to short a stock. You know, if you wanted to short a stock, it's typically it's something that's difficult for a person to do. You know, they certainly can't do it on a lot of brokers, or, or a lot of these kids would have to get certain level of approval on their on their account. They would have to have a certain level of funding and they have to go through a certain level of steps. It wouldn't be as easy as the previous experience that I just described. There's a lot of inverse ETFs. So you just buy the share, the inverse it, some, you let somebody else take care of this quote unquote uh, unlimited risk. And, and, and so they're just kind of uh, uh, 
streamlining the experience of being able to short stocks without the burden of having to 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 borrow anything or to have to pay the, the the borrowing fee. And so it just becomes so much easier to do this. And then if you want to talk about the complexities of it, right? Like the 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 arbitrary nature of it, and this is one of my favorite ones. If you take uh and, and this is this is my last example, I promise, but you take take something like the VIX, and the VIX is, is is a fun instrument because it moves so much, and traders do like it. Uh, one because it, you know, when it moves, it moves a lot. So a day trader tends to to, to get good action out of it. Then it also mean reverting, so they 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 can come up with some good patterns to to trade. So it's attractive for those reasons. But the VIX is just this abstract math formula, right? Like it follows measure what's going on in the stock options. You can't really trade the VIX, but you have the futures for it. Uh, and then you can trade the, the European options on the futures. But that's still really difficult for, for one of these kids to trade on on, uh, on these app-based brokers. But they can trade ETFs, right? So you can get the ETF. And if, if that ETF is not good enough for you, you can get the leveraged ETF and you can margin on your on your broker account in case that's not enough leverage for you and then you can get the leveraged dtf on your margin account and if that's not enough leverage for you you can buy options on top of this leveraged dtf using your margin account which is measuring the volatility of options right so i mean this is this conflict i mean this i mean if you want to talk about having fun like this is a system which is which is uh, lending itself to 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 people that want to just <laughs> have fun with it. So obviously, this is a topic in my book, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of kind of complexities as you start adding those layers there, and you know, the more and more they remove the barrier to entry, you're probably going to get some people in there who perhaps shouldn't be, or, or perhaps don't understand the the full risks that they're taking on. And it's kind of funny because it seems like Wall Street bets almost has like this. Um, infatuation or this obsession with Robin Hood, like it's it's a it's a common topic of discussion. And I guess one of the things which came out of that just recently, uh, and most people listening to this would have probably seen the headlines, uh, was the the quote unquote infinite money cheat code, uh, which was exposed on Wall Street Bets by one of your members. Um, for, for anyone who perhaps didn't look into that too much, can you just describe what happened there? Sort of in short. So the short version was, uh, one guy decided he discovered a, a, a cheat code, <laughs> like a, a cheat code. Well, I guess we can call it. Somebody called it that as a joke, but you know, I guess it uh, gives an insight into the mindset that these kids have. This guy, he took I forget which which particular stock. I think it was AMD, if I'm not mistaken. He bought a hundred shares using his margin accounts. And so after the uh, the hundred shares, he sold a covered call. You know, deep in the money covered call. That basically gave him um, his money back, which then uh, Robin Hood took it as a sorry, calculated as an additional deposit. They doubled his money. He then bought an additional two hundred shares. He sold two more calls on that. He got that money back. He got margin on top of that. He doubled that money again. He kept going on and on. I believe he got like fifty thousand dollars worth. And on the last iteration of this, instead of Continuing to do it, he took the fifty thousand dollars, which you know, if he considered cash, he could do what he wanted with it. He put it on, I believe it was Apple puts, no Apple calls. I don't remember. He put it on Apple earnings, and he and he got it wrong, and he uh, and he lost uh, he lost that money, uh, and he streamed that reaction on YouTube live. Uh, that was, um, uh, <laughs> so I believe, that was on a Friday. Obviously, got a lot of attention. You know, and the, over the weekend, everyone was talking about it, looking at this video. By Monday came around, people were were trying to replicate this, and of course they did. And, and people from Wall Street bets they do what they do best. They try to one up each other. And next thing you know, uh, three or four people had gotten a two thousand dollar deposit, and they taken that same uh, approach to get into one million dollar positions. So certainly, the million dollar position got the attention of the headlines all over. Now, did that mean they had a million dollars tied up in this position or that somehow gamed it so that there was like a million dollars of like buying power in their accounts? They could take that million dollars and put it into something else. Like you said this guy was doing something with AMD shares, uh, but then took that money and put it into Apple. To the best of my knowledge, so to the best of my knowledge, so the first guy, the guy that did this, um, his, well, the guy who did this, he, he got the $50,000 right? Recycling these covered calls, which 
some would argue is not all that risky of a position. You know, he's technically just, you know, he's, he's on one side, he's long AMD uh, with the shares he's buying. And on the other side, he's short AMD with the, you know, you know, with the, uh, the, the call he's selling. So he's in theory neutral, right. Relatively speaking, right. He's losing some money on the spreads and things like that. So long as he doesn't do anything with that position, he's not really in too much trouble, right? But it's that last iteration when he's got the cash, he's got the fifty thousand dollars cash, and he decides to do something else with it and bet it on Apple earnings. That was that's the really risky thing. So what happens next is the the, the people that have the million dollar positions, they get up to a million dollar buying power, uh, and they have the the power to do the same. To my knowledge, they didn't get to the point where they where they yoloed the million dollars. I think that would have been. <laughs> That would have been uh, that, that would have been a different uh, situation. I think that by the time this rolled around, Robin Hood was aware of the situation. They were pretty much on top of canceling these accounts, or at least freezing these accounts. I mean, I think that it was a game of cat and mouse because the moment that they froze accounts, these positions with one million dollars on a, on a market that's open, some of these some of these kids were were not necessarily cycling the same position, uh, you know, so I don't know the guy did this with Ford. I, I, I don't have the specifics. They're all online, but some kids decided to do some of them with, with one, uh, set of securities, you know, some of them decided to do a mix of them. And so some positions were losing money. Some of them were getting, I know for a fact that one of the guys ended up making money and was able to actually withdraw the money, um, as the whole cancellation process was taking place. Uh, to my knowledge, nobody actually successfully took the million dollars to put it into some huge YOLO. Most of these accounts were frozen as they were doing it. One, uh, I think that one of the interviews that I'd read uh, from one of the guys said that the only regret that he had was not being quicker with his actions because had he been quicker, he would have been able to use that money before the account was frozen because he did actually make a little bit of a trade and he did make money from the trade and he did uh, he was able to, to withdraw that account. And so, sorry, he was able to withdraw that money. So yeah, I think it would have been much more uh, disastrous for everyone involved if they were actually used that money. Yeah, yeah. And I had to laugh. There was uh, shortly after that came out, Robin Hood must have been rolling out into, was it the UK? And there was some uh, TV host who was interviewing the, <laughs> the founder of uh, Robin Hood and he asked him <laughs> if the... Uh, if the infinite leverage was going to be available to UK customers as well, that was uh, <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. I guess another one of the highlights from the timeline of Wall Street Bets would be Martin Shkreli's involvement. Now, I don't actually know too much about to what extent he was involved in it, so I guess that could be my question. What was his involvement with uh, the subreddit? I know there was some sort of unofficial AMA at one point. I think he may have even been a moderator. Yeah, what was his involvement there? So Wall Street Bets, I think, I think it prides itself on just the community prides itself on being somewhat of a renegade outlaw community that's you know kind of thinks outside the box. And after this this infinite margin thing, you know, somebody on on CNBC, Josh Brown, I believe, had called uh, the people that did the psychopaths, and and that only fueled them <laughs> up. You know, it really made them proud. So that, you know, going back to that kind of mentality, going back to, to Martin Shkreli, there was a period where he was being completely demonized. You know, he's, of course, a, a young entrepreneur who is in pharmaceuticals. He bought some company. Uh, I forget the details of it, but he, he bought some, some he's, he's a brilliant investor and he bought some some drug company that, that I forget what does it cure some type of AIDS. Uh, some kind of type of AIDS medication, he raised the drug price for some reason or another. And so the, the mainstream media at the time and the majority of Reddit included, you know, started to 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 paint this guy as just a really bad guy. How can you take a five, ten dollar pill and raise the price to seven hundred dollars? You're killing the people with AIDS and you're a bad person. And you know, the the people from Wall Street Bets took a different approach and uh, decided to take uh, the, the business side and say, well, hold on a second, you know, this guy bought the the, the pharmaceutical company that was going to fail anyways. And uh, I, I'm personally not taking a stance one way or the other, but you know, the, the, the overall sentiment on the subreddit was, hey, this pharmaceutical company was going to go out of business anyways. And, you know, and this guy's, you know, I, I guess Martin Shkreli's argument was, 
I'm going to give this pill out to people if they have insurance or if they don't, I'm going to give it free. And I don't know. He had his side of the story and, and people of Wall Street best really liked it. Um, well, uh, sorry, Sh- Martin Shkreli also had uh, very interesting, insightful YouTube videos that he would post where he would explain how he evaluates companies and how he does his investing. I don't know how, you know, how, how he does his, his analysis, his fundamental analysis. It was really, really interesting. So people really liked him. They really started becoming a huge advocate and they started defending him. And uh, shortly after, he started getting in, uh, into legal trouble for completely different reasons. I think he got in trouble, which is what he's for in jail now, some kind of securities fraud. They started defending him. They started printing T-shirts that says "Free Martin." You know, they started calling him the Wolf of Wall Street Bets. And uh, yeah, I reached out to him at some point. He was on Reddit, and I reached out to him and I invited him to be a you know a moderator on 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 Wall Street Bets. And I said, "Hey, you know, I wrote him a private message. I said, look, I know that right now you just get killed from from all sides anywhere else on Reddit and on TV. You know, and every, any news channel that you'd see on, he'd just be getting uh, attacked." I said, "Look." You know, this the subreddit's a place where not only are they taking your side, but you know they, they actually respect you for as as an investor, let, let alone this uh, pharmaceutical situation. So you have a safe place here if you want to come. So he did. He, he accepted the moderator position. He would come on uh, on Reddit. We try to get him to do the AMA. To, to my knowledge, he might have done it. I, I don't remember, but to my knowledge, he he never got around to it. He eventually got convicted of whatever he got convicted and now he's in jail but hopefully when he gets out in a couple of years he'll come back right i guess just to summarize our talk here jamie let's just go through maybe some of the the most degenerate moments or some of the the things which uh have shocked you or surprised you some of the things you know that you've witnessed over the years uh as the the person behind wall street bets and and some of the things which you suspect to be real i know there's Often uh, a lot of allegations about things being fake and, and not true, and it can be a little bit tricky to, to tell sometimes. What is the most money you've seen being made by a single member? The most money, and I've, I've, I, yeah, I have a, a decent BS detector, so at this point I can generally sniff out who's, who's for real and who's not for real. Um, and also let me qualify your question. We do have professional traders who make a lot of money professionally, consistently. And so I'm going to put them outside of that question because it's not fair to pin them up against these guys that are yellowing because those guys will take the cake. Right. So I would have to say there's one guy who made $2.5 million. I believe from it was less than one or two hundred thousand dollar bet. I don't have the details of that of that trade right off the top of my head. It wasn't the particularly impressive trade? Yeah, you know, for some reason, some of the more impressive trades don't have necessarily to do about the amount of money that were that, that, that were made. Um, the, the more impressive trades are really more about uh, either the risk that are involved or the creativity around them. Uh, but I would say the most amount of money that I've seen somebody make was two point five million dollars from about one or two hundred thousand at risk, uh, and that was I think within a year ago, less than a year ago. That's quite impressive. We might uh we might try and dig up a link to that post and, and stick it in the show notes. I'll send I'll send it to you. Okay, cool. Um and what about on the, the flip side? Most money you've seen lost in a single trade? Oh, that one's easy. Three point eight three point eight or three point two million dollars. Wow. Uh yeah, that, that one's actually a super, super, super interesting story. Um and that one's also in the books. This guy all right, so I'll, I'll summarize the story really quickly. He, he lost his money on February fifth, two thousand eighteen. This was on the day that that uh, the stocks went down. I believe about the uh, indices went down about four percent. The the VIX went up over a hundred percent. This kid, he's young. He's um, he's about twenty five now. Uh, he, at the age of twenty, he taught himself how to trade. He took t- took about fifty thousand dollars. Uh, of his own capital with with some savings and some inheritance, taught himself how to trade literally from the like Khan Academy and some some books and some forums and whatnot. And he, within three years, he took that fifty thousand dollars. He turned it into four million dollars. I mean, this guy was a consistently very good trader. I mean, he's, he's an exception. He's not the rule, obviously. Uh, and he knew what he was doing. You don't you don't do that by accident. So he'd gotten that much money, and so he did, he liked volatility products. He was into that. He didn't do stock options. He didn't do he didn't do these these ridiculously high risk things. And he had 
Uh, he's just had, he, he got hit by a black swan event. He had all of his money in, or at least pretty much the majority of it, on, into an ETF called XIV, which is an inverse uh, VIX volatility ETF, which was owned by Credit Suisse that was liquidated a couple of days or a couple of weeks after this this huge black swan event, which was a whole interesting chapter. But yeah, he, lo- he lost all that money. Um, so he ended up posting that on Wall Street Bets. And so the, 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 uh, the happy ending to that story after he posted it, you know, people, brokers reached out to him. They're like, wow, did you really turn the 50 K into 4 million? He said, yeah. And they said, prove it to him. So he proved it with all of his accounts, his broker statements. And so they hired him. So now he's gainfully employed, employed things to wall street. Best. So yeah, he got a lot of publicity from, from that post he made. So, so now he's back on his feet. I don't, I'm, I'm sure he regrets having lost all that money, but now he's, he was able to recover from that. That's a tough loss to swallow. I can't even imagine. Let's speak about this off air. I'd, I'd be interested in trying to get this guy on the podcast. Anyway, uh, moving on. Someone who, example of someone who got extremely lucky or extremely unlucky. <laughs> okay, so <it's, laughs> this is a funny one. So this guy is probably one of my favorite stories. This guy's name was Flops. He one, two, three, or something like that. It's also about maybe about a year ago. He makes this post. He goes, Hey guys, you know, I just made up 110 or $120,000. I don't even know how, like help me out. <laughs> so he put, he puts this explanation, an interesting explanation. He was trading these, these options, credit spreads. I forget what they were. He's really tight. He was making two cents on these credit spreads from a 50,000, uh, dollar because I had fifty thousand dollars in, in on his E Trade account. These were it was even paying commissions on this ridiculous. I don't even understand what the logic was, and I'm not even sure he understood what the logic was. But he was trying to pick up pennies in, in front of a huge steamroller. So he bought in, I forget, like a thousand of these of these uh, spreads uh, for trying to pick up these two cent spreads. Uh, right before the market had closed, and apparently he got assigned like eight hundred of a thousand uh, <laughs> of these options that he had. So he wakes up the next morning, or I forget it was a Friday or Monday, whatever. He, he wakes up the next morning, and he'd gotten assigned the eight hundred. So he had twenty three million dollars worth of spy shares in his account. You know, from the puts that were in the money. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't have twenty three million dollars, so he put some orders in there to sell them right away. He was lucky that he was able to actually get filled. Uh, to sell those those uh, those shares uh, that he had, I don't know how many thousands of shares he had to sell at that point. So he sold the the, the shares. He got filled, and you know he, he ended up making one hundred twenty thousand dollars for having borrowed the twenty three million dollars. He had to pay about ten thousand dollars worth of interest of margin fees, I guess it was, to his broker. <laughs> and then and, and then obviously his his tax burden was interesting. So he he, he mistakenly, without understanding what the uh, assignment risks involved were with options where he made 120 grand and very lucky. Very lucky because he could have lost a million dollars really easily too had he waited before selling those shares. Well I hope he took the money and ran. <laughs> you yeah. don't get that sort of luck very often. <laughs> what about I know there's been some this will probably be the last one. I know there's been some pretty elaborate uh, trolls on Wall Street bets. Uh, like some, I know there was one instance where I don't know the finer details, but uh, some guy claimed to have inherited a million dollars or two million dollars, and over the space of the next year or two, had sort of pretty much gambled it away to nothing. Turned out to be a big hoax. I don't know if there been any other moments like that which which stand out to you. No, so he's probably the biggest profile one, and he's the guy I referred to earlier that was the first to use the term YOLO on, on the subreddit. So for what it's worth, he gets the credit for using that for the first time. Okay. Uh, and, that, and, and that was, you know, that was, it, I think everyone has a love-hate relationship with him because what he did was, was entertaining. He did a very good job with the troll. I mean, he got caught. On a super technicality because his, he he posted videos very elaborate where you could see him going to the computer. He would boot his computer up. He would log into his broker, but he fabricated these sites, and so he would fabricate the DNS so that when he would type in, you know, like, so he he knew how to, to 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 fake these things very very well. And and somebody ended up 
catching like a rounding error on one of his pages and that's how he got caught. But anyways, um, no, that, that was probably the biggest one. I think that the, the subreddit as a whole is very, got a trolley feel to it. Not, you know, like since, since day one, I don't, I don't think necessarily people trying to fake it. It's not, it's not all that entertaining. I mean, this, this guy was because he did a, a good job with it, but I, I think somebody that fakes a, a trade at this point is not really funny, but you know, the moderators are very funny. You know, they, they, at some point you have this influx of, of, underage or, or young kids that don't necessarily trade um and, and they'll do some things to quote unquote troll the users so recently you know one guy got up there and put one of a moderator posted said hey you know for all the kids that, that don't you know feel left out this this threat is for you you know if you are under 18 or if you have less than so, so much money in your account you know we're gonna have like a, a super cool fun paper trading contest or something, you know, and post your, 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 your name in here. And then you're qualified to be into this, into this contest. And if you're over 18 or if you have a lot of money in your trading account, don't post your name or, or we're going to ban or we're going to ban you. Right. And so a lot of people post into, into this thing and they're all excited because they get to finally participate into, you know, forum where they've been felt left out. And then after this guy accumulates everybody's names, you know, about a week later, he posts a video and he goes, ha ha, this, this was a joke. Like all you guys are banned because you're bringing down the quality of the subreddit. <laughs> right. That's harsh. That's harsh. <laughs> it's, it's harsh, but it was, you know, it was funny. And like, so that's, you know, obviously it can turn around and make a new account and they can continue to participate, sure. but it's, 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 uh, you know, April fools. The first time we had April fools, we were linked to by some, some big publication and the, the moderators are famous for, changing the theme to obscene uh, adult themed uh, <laughs> material. And so you'll have Bloomberg or one of them hot link to our sub and, and they'll end up with things that are not safe for work. And, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's rough humor, but that's the, the type of trolley behavior that actually brings, you know, a smile to people's face, not so much somebody that decides to fake a trade. Right. And I guess that's the reason why, well, you've got 700,000 members who enjoy spending time on there. One last thing, Jamie, you've, you've mentioned a couple of times that uh, you've got a book on the way coming out soon. What should we expect from that? I'm sure it'll be very entertaining. Yeah, so the book is called Wall Street Bets, How Boomers Tailor Made the World's Biggest Casino for Millennials. Uh, and the book is, is a combination between um, explaining this topic that you probably heard me get a little passionate about earlier, right? Which is this tendency that we're seeing nowadays uh, with this millennial generation that that uh, uh, the habits that we're seeing with them on the way that they're trading the, the stock market. And it is very much related with uh, Wall Street bets, the growth that it's seen. Um, I found some very interesting uh uh, while researching this book, I've, I've, I've bumped into some very surprising things that I was not expecting to find. And I've interlaced it with a ton of really great stories from Wall Street Bets uh, to go explaining these things, right? So a lot of these, to a certain extent, I'm you know going through and explaining, well, what are the incentives and what is the government's role and, and you know, how, how are they playing a, a part and, and are they complicit in there? And, you know, and, and it feels like you're reading part of the comments in the Wall Street bets and, you know, okay, well, so uh, how do these options work? So, and then we have some, some great stories with some of these people. And so it's, it's you know, you, it feels like you're kind of reading the, the forum, but at the same time, you're, you're getting a perspective uh, for what this, uh, what the climate is right now with, with regards to, to Wall Street, you know, at the end of the day what these these millennials are doing what these kids are doing on 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 wall street bets they're they're being called uh irresponsible psychopaths degenerates you know but to, to some extent you know what they're doing is you know similar to to what these banks might have been doing previously they're just you know doing it on a smaller scale but on much big much bigger volume you know and using tools that that are potentially really dangerous but didn't exist before so Hoping to have that book out by well, it's, it's written already, but it'll, it should be out by January after it's done through the editing process. Okay, January, and where will it be available? You told me earlier that you've self-published this. Um, it'll be on Amazon, I take it. Yep, it's going to be available on Amazon. It'll be available both on um, print as well as e uh, Kindle. Okay, well, I'd love to read a copy when it's when it's available. 
so the best place, obviously, is to go to Reddit, Wall Street Bets, if you fancy some entertainment. And also, you're on Twitter as well. Is your Twitter handle uh, just the same? It's, yeah, at Wall Street Bets. Okay, excellent. Is that street or uh, spelt S-T-R-E-E-T or S-T? It's the whole thing spelled out. So W-A-L-L-S-T-R-E-E-T-B-E-T-S. Okay, very good. Uh, Jamie, I want to thank you for your time and, and thanks a lot for reaching out. Um, this has been an, an interesting episode, a little bit different from the normal. So uh, that's always a good thing. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. I had a good time. You've reached the end of this episode of Chat with Traders. But rest assured, there are more episodes loaded with real market insight and zero hype on the way soon. So to stay updated with each great new release, subscribe to the podcast and iTunes. And we'd love it if you'd leave a rating and review. We'll catch you next time on Chat with Traders. Chat with Traders.